As you guys may know, I have an Airbnb in Palm Springs, California called the Racket Club Resort. Having this project totally done now, I've been itching to do another one, especially seeing what kind of returns you can get. I found it to be really financially rewarding and also creatively rewarding. But for a few reasons, I don't want to do another one in Palm Springs. So after months of looking on Zillow, considering different locations and types of properties, I finally closed on my next property. Now this property is extremely different, so I'll just give you a tour of it. I'm building a house in Joshua Tree. That's right, I'm building a house this time. So I bought a piece of land in Joshua Tree, California, and I didn't buy this piece of land myself. I actually bought it with Rob Built. We're collaborating on this build. He has two Airbnbs he's built out in Joshua Tree. And before we get into the plans, I want to thank here.co for sponsoring this video. If you guys haven't heard of here, it's a website that allows you to invest in vacation rentals like you would stocks. Here is a look at here's website and how you can invest in a rental. So you can look at each each property individually and decide which one that you want to invest in. For example, here's a house on the Florida Gulf Coast and you can invest in this with as little as a hundred dollars. Significantly less money than, you know, buying a whole vacation rental and trying to set it up yourself. You can see photos of the place. As you can see, it's all set up and ready to go. You don't have to lift a finger. Getting an Airbnb set up is like a full-time job and so this is a way that that you can invest in them without having to spend all the time and all the money, but you still get a lot of the benefits. When you invest in a vacation rental on here, you actually get economic rights of the underlying property. So that means you get some tax benefits that come with owning property. You get potential net rental income, and you also get appreciation if the house goes up in value. Each property on the platform has been securitized with the SEC and is broken down into shares. And here takes care of all the bookings, the management of the whole property. So you don't have to deal with guests or any problems that arise. It really is a fully passive way to invest in vacation rentals. This is the next one that will be available. By the time this video is up, it should be live. So if you're interested in learning more or investing in a vacation rental, you can click the link below. If you're looking into investing in a vacation rental, this is like the easiest way that you can possibly get started. I think it's so cool. And let's get back to my property. Let's rewind a bit because I want to take you guys through the process process of land hunting because it's pretty different than house hunting. Shopping for land is a little more daunting than house hunting because you're really more on your own with this. You can find plots of land on Redfin or Zillow. We set our budget under $100,000. And then we basically just scrolled around till we found one that looked good. And normally at this point, if you're house hunting, you'd have a real estate agent reach out to look at it with you. But with land, you just find the location and go ahead and look at it. Oftentimes the address listed is incorrect, but you can find the parcel number, plug it into the county assessor application and boom, you have the actual location. So I spent a day on my own just going driving around Joshua Tree and looking at pieces of land and this is what I found. So the first piece of land I'll show you guys, it had such a cool view. It had an amazing view. However, it was on a dirt road. You had to drive pretty far on a dirt road to get to it. I actually didn't even go all the way because I felt like my car was gonna get stuck. So I thought that was just kind of a hassle having to deal with that. And that one also didn't have any other houses nearby at all. So it felt a little bit creepy, but more importantly, that's kind of an indicator that there most likely isn't utilities nearby. It seems like there probably wasn't water or power and that would get really expensive to set up if it's not even close. So I love the view of this one and I thought the price was good. I wasn't able to confirm if it had utilities though. So this one was on the list, but it felt a little risky. Now on to property number two. This property was actually in Yucca Valley, which is a neighboring town to Joshua Tree. This one was listed just under 50,000, so it's the cheapest of the three. It's pretty close to the national park. It's secluded, but not in a creepy way. It also looked like it had a Joshua Tree on the property, which is really cool. The con with this one is that it's in Yucca Valley and it seems like they're more strict on vacation rentals than Joshua Tree. It also said the electricity was across the street, so it might be expensive to extend that. But the price was good on this one, so it was definitely on the list of considerations. 
So property number three is the most expensive, listed at $95,000. It's a good location right on a paved road, but the road wasn't busy, so it's really easy to get to. The view wasn't as cool as the first one though, which was definitely a bummer, but it did still have some mountain view, which was pretty nice. This one was the most expensive though, but for good reason, it had utilities on the property. So after touring, Rob and I discussed the pros and cons of each and decided to put an offer on one of them. And that one was, drum roll please, property number three. We were able to negotiate it down to $90,000, so we got $5,000 off. And now I'll show you guys around the land. Okay, so here is the land. It's five acres, so it's kind of a lot of space. And a lot of the plots of land out here are five acres or two and a half acres. However, we don't plan to build on all of that. So what I liked about this piece of land is you do get kind of a view. When you look out this way, you can see these mountains, which is just really, really cool. Having some kind of view, like a mountain view, is always great for a vacation rental. And while it is a bit far into the distance, I still think it's great that we have some kind of view. Like you can see mountains, you can see just desert landscape. So we definitely want to orient the house to face the mountains. But that's kind of what you're looking at at this piece of property. And over there, that one's actually like quite a bit taller because we're pretty close to that. More of a hill, not really a mountain. When you look out this way, there's not really anything. So I'm thinking we'll kind of want to face the house with the backyard kind of thing, like a, a porch that you can look out at the view. Something I also think is kind of nice with these properties is there's a lot of just like natural plants and things like that that look kind of cool. So we will have to move some of these when we build, but we can leave a lot of them in the surrounding area. And it's not just like a plain piece of sand. That would be pretty boring. It's got like some stuff going on. And some of them are pretty cool. Like look at this one, this cactus thing super cool looking so over here i believe this is a yucca plant which is kind of cool that we've got this oh a lizard that scared me this cactus looks dead but it was cool looking another thing i really liked about this piece of land is that there are other Airbnbs nearby. And I checked them out on AirDNA and they seem to do pretty well. So this location seemed, you know, good for Airbnb guests that were maybe gonna go into the national park. And it also just makes it feel a little less creepy. Like if you don't see any houses around, it's kind of cool, but it's kind of a little bit at night. I could see people maybe being a little bit spooked. There's like a number of different Airbnbs. So that's kind of nice. Um, oh, there's a Joshua tree. Let's go check it out. I hear something moving. Probably a lizard. <gasps> what the f Do you see that? Do you see that wolf? Coyote? Okay, I was not expecting to see this during the day, and this is why many of the Airbnbs have fences in the surrounding area, but it's not as developed as somewhere like Palm Springs. So you could see this at any Airbnb out in Joshua Tree, but yeah, probably gonna put a fence around the house. I really like that this piece of land already has water on it. As you can see, we've got a fire hydrant right here on the property. It also has power on the property. While there certainly are cheaper pieces of land out there, there's quite a few under $50,000 if you look on Redfin but rarely do these pieces of land have utilities like water and power already on them and getting it set up would probably cost more than the piece of land itself. So that's a look at the piece of land. I think it's gonna be a great canvas to work with. And now let's talk about the next steps. So we closed on the property already, had a soil test done, and are now figuring out the plans so that we can get permits. We've landed on a style of house that we like and kind of mocked up some very basic, and I'm sure this is super amateur uh, designs and sketch up that I've done. And we'll be taking this to an architect or a draftsman pretty soon now to to make it so we're able to get permits and just make it more legit, you know, because this is definitely, this is just me messing around in SketchUp. But this is an early look at the plans. I'm sure this will all change as time goes on and I'll definitely document the whole thing, so stay tuned. I've had a lot of people ask why build in Joshua Tree in general? And really it's because Joshua Tree is a really popular vacation destination in Southern California. A ton of people go here. There's a national park that last year got 3 million visitors. Number two, property 
properties are pretty inexpensive compared to most areas. You can buy a plot of land here for under $100,000 and there's not that many places I feel that you can do that, that people are going to for Airbnb. There's definitely not a lot of places around national parks where you can do that. I'm not going to pay like a million dollars just for a plot of land at this point in my life. So to do a new construction project, somewhere like Joshua Tree is really ideal because you're not gonna be spending as much on the land itself. And the third reason it's a good place to make an Airbnb is there's not that many hotels out here. So while there are a ton of people that visit, everyone basically stays in Airbnbs. There's a few hotels, but they're kind of like super eight. You know, they're not a bunch of resorts like Palm Springs. So while there are a lot more Airbnbs than there used to be, there's still plenty of people coming here to stay in them. So it's a really popular destination, believe it or not. A lot of people are kind of surprised by that because it is desert land. It's not really what you think of when you think of National Park. If you're not familiar with the area, it might seem like the middle of nowhere and it kind of is. But so many people in places like LA live in an apartment and to be able to rent an entire house for the weekend for a price that's a lot less expensive than Palm Springs is really appealing to people that are stuck in apartments all the time. I know myself and my friends have gone on weekend trips to Joshua Tree and really enjoyed it. It's really peaceful, it's nice to have the space, and of course you can go into the national park too. There are some really cool rock formations, obviously Joshua Trees, there's natural pools, hiking trails, things like that. So people really like to go there when they want to escape the city, especially people that live in Southern California. Another reason Joshua tree was a good place is because you are allowed to rent the house out as much as you want out here. So a lot of cities like Palm Springs for example limit the amount of rental contracts you can do but in Joshua Tree you can rent your house out every night of the year if you want. So really there is the potential to make a lot more of a profit than doing another Palm Springs Airbnb. So that is my new real estate project. It's gonna take a couple years to fully finish, but I will be documenting it along the way. So of course, be sure to subscribe if you aren't, if you wanna see more of this. Comment below any questions that you have, and that is it for today. Bye.